welcome to our Every Nation in Dada Spark online platform. If you are here for the first time, check the links in the description below to find out more about who we are as a church. Today we are continuing our sermon series called Face to Face and Isabella will be preaching this morning on the subject of pain. Um, maybe this is a very difficult topic for you to delve in, but I do want to encourage you to take a moment and listen and hear from her, as I know Isabella will also be sharing from her experiences just how the Lord has walked with her in this journey. I hope you enjoy. Good day. It is so good to be with you today. We are in the middle of a citywide sermon series called Face to Face. And we have visited many topics that's uncomfortable to talk about but that we really wanted to hear God's heart about. We have looked at anxiety, loneliness, addictions, and sexuality. But before I start introducing today's topic, I want, I want to propose this question to you. Can something bad be good? Just think about that for a minute. Can something bad be good for us? Now, when I don't work at the church, I am an occupational therapist and I specialize in hand injuries. So I see a lot of patients coming through my doors with an injured hand. And the first thing they ask me is, are you going to hurt me today? And the first thing I tell them is, I'm not here to hurt you, but to help you. And in that, the topic that we are going to talk about today is pain, pain and hurt. And the thing about pain is that it's something that we view as really bad. It's something that we try to avoid at all costs. We don't really want to experience pain. But today we are going to unbox pain. We try to put it in a box and classify it and say, this is there and we just want to keep it under the covers. But today we're going to unpack it, unbox it, unmask it and become face to face with pain. So we're going to look at how we react to pain, explore pain and see if it's only bad or is there something good that can come from this. And then we are going to get to know the God of all comfort. So let's dive into the scriptures in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 to 10. We Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians where they were suffering. They were really going through difficult times, persecutions and afflictions. And even Paul himself writes here that he went through such an affliction and difficult time that he felt like he was experiencing death itself. And in this moment, he writes this letter to encourage the church. And let's hear what he says. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had experienced the sentence of death, but that was to make us not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope that He will deliver us again. 
See, the core message of this scripture is strength in weakness. Paul turns upside down our natural expectation of how life should work. Contrary to the way the world and our human hearts function, God takes what is low and despised and painful, hopeless situations and turns it into something amazing, beautiful and powerful. So let's talk about when pain comes. The Bible is clear on that, that pain will come. It's not a, a matter of if it will come, it is when it will come. In Matthew, it says, in this world, you will have troubles, but fear not, I have overcome this world. So why do we experience pain? Where does pain come from? That is an age old question. And there are many answers to this question. Among other things, we live in a broken world where we experience loss. We also face attacks from the devil. And then we were made with freedom of choice. And unfortunately, we can sometimes choose wrong and then enter into sin, which will also result in pain. And unfortunately, sometimes other people's sin and wrong choices <clears throat> can impact our lives and cause pain in our lives. Accidents happen, honest mistakes. And then there is the part that we don't understand. The part where God sovereignly allows something to happen. But the problem is that the devil wants to keep us so trapped on focusing where the pain is coming from, that it keeps us there and doesn't allow us to focus on how to heal through this pain. But first, let's look at how we react when we experience pain. Now, in neurophysiology, there is something they call the pain gate theory. And that's basically what happens when we experience pain, what happens in our brain. So for a hand, for instance, when you would touch something that is hurtful, your hand would immediately, the nervous system in your hand, would send an impulse to your brain. And when that painful stimuli or impulse reaches your brain, it will immediately open up a gate, the pain gate in your brain and all kinds of alarm bells will go off in your brain and your brain will start reacting. It will send blood supply to the area. It will say, pull away your hand. It will send swelling to the area to help to heal that problem. And so when we experience pain in our hearts and in our emotions, we also react in certain ways. Let's look at some of the ways we respond to pain. The first one is shock, denial, anger, blame, and sadness. And the thing is, if we don't deal with these emotions and we don't start going through the healing process with these emotions, these emotions, if they set up camp in our heart, will mature into shock, will mature into disillusionment, denial, substance abuse, you just want to get rid of the pain or be becoming a workaholic. You just want to be so busy that you don't have time to face your pain. Anger, unforgiveness and bitterness. Blame, you just keep on blaming others and you feel that the world owes you something and you develop a victim mentality. And sadness, you isolate yourself and you become so lonely. But the common denominator of all of this painful experience and responses is that we become hypersensitive and easily offended. Now, I had a patient recently who was shot through his shoulder. So his pain gate wasn't just opened up, it was bound open. And he was so depressed and so despondent when it happened that he literally isolated himself from the world for six months. He isolated his hand, he didn't use it at all because he was just so hurt physically and emotionally. 
after six months, he started picking himself up and decided to start walking the healing process and started with rehabilitation. But because of the time that he doesn't use his hand for the purpose that it was intended, the hand withered away completely. So he had to start from scratch rehabilitating that hand, learning the hand how to, to fulfill its purpose again, how to function again. And one of the things that he had to go through with that hand is to interpret sensations. You see what happens with a hand when a nerve was injured, so literally when somebody hit a nerve, is that it will interpret everything as pain. Your nervous system was designed with the first intention to protect you. That's why you experience sensation. So when a nerve is injured, it realizes that it is compromised. So then it becomes hypersensitive to protect you from pain and then it, it interprets any sensation as pain. It's like marking a monkey puzzle, all the answers B, 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 because you know sooner or later you are going to be right. And then your body feels that at least then it's they did its job. So then what we do to rehabilitate that sensation of pain into a normal functional sensation where you can actually use the hand again and not having to isolate it because it's just too painful to use it all the time, is to recalibrate it with the other hand, with the truth. We take certain textures like cotton wool and we will put it on the uninjured hand without looking at that hand because the brain needs to register what it is experiencing. And we will put the cotton hand on the hand, cotton wool on the hand, and then the brain will register, this is something soft, it's cotton wool. When you put it on the injured hand where there was a nerve injury and there's hypersensitivity, the brain will register. So this side will say cotton wool 100%, so it's 10 out of 10. This side, the brain will register 20 out of 10 and it will feel like sanding paper. And then we take the patient through a process of increasing the roughness of the textures. After cotton wool, once they've put it on their hand for about a week, it becomes 15 out of 10, and after a while, 12 out of 10, and after a while, the brain learns, this doesn't really hurt. And then we start with the next texture, sponge, and then a washcloth, a crispy towel, and the green side of that sponge we use at a basin. And then in the end, they dip their hand in a bowl of raw rice without experiencing any pain. And then they would be able to use that hand again for the purpose for which it was intended, to be a functional hand. And just like that, when we experience pain, God wants to encourage us to go to scriptures, go to the truths, and recalibrate that pain that we experience and run to him with our pain instead of away from him and, and just enter into his presence and hear his heart about this. And every time you get exposed to a painful stimuli, just to go to God's word and in your heart just realize, is this really painful or am I overreacting? I also want to encourage you to not isolate yourself for six months and just say, or even more, and say, it's too painful. I don't want to experience any pain, so I'm just not going to enter into relationships. I'm not going to enter into life. I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on, to live life, to push into that painful relationships, into that painful experiences, so that you can heal in and through relationships while calibrating yourself with the truth. So on the other hand, what would a world without pain look like? It sounds amazing. Imagine this world of us didn't have any pain. You know, a world like that does exist. It exists in the form of a leprosy colony in the north of India. Leprosy, the bacteria of, that causes leprosy, initially was thought to let your flesh rot away. 
But Dr. Paul Brand, who is the father of hand surgery, one of the fathers of hand surgery, was part of a leprosy mission to this colony in India. And he realized that it, the bacteria doesn't actually make your flesh rot away. It, the bacteria attacks your nerves. And it actually kills away the sensation of pain from your nervous system. You can't feel any pain. And because of that, you don't realize when you get hurt. So you keep on injuring yourself, injuring yourself. And because of that, your flesh starts rotting away. And there's no time for that flesh to heal before you injure yourself again, because you can't experience any pain. And he wrote a book, The Gift of Pain. Now, not a lot of people would see pain as a gift, but Dr. Paul Brand says in his book, if I had the power to choose one thing for my leprosy patients, I would choose the gift of pain. What does the Bible say about this gift of pain? Let's see what 2 Corinthians 1 says. Well, in the first place, before we delve into 2 Corinthians 1, let's just think about the first thing that we said pain does help us with is for our protection so that we don't get hurt. So the first thing you would do when you put your hand on a hot stove plate is to pull your hand away. And so with the Ten Commandments, God actually reveals his heart of love to us and says, you know what, don't do this. And we can translate it maybe to rather don't do this. Because when you covet, when you lie, when you murder, and when you steal, you will experience pain. It will lead to pain and destruction. So because I love you so much, rather don't do that. So when pain does come, from sin and from operating outside the borders of God's will, we experience pain. And therefore, the first thing that that pain tells us is actually to protect us, to prevent us from going further down, down that path of destruction. So the moment we experience pain, we can actually change our ways and realize, oh goodness, I'm not doing the right thing at the moment. Let me just turn back to God. The other thing is amazing as we think about the story of Joseph, where God actually protected him and his family from famine and from dying from hunger because he went through a very painful period in his life. But in the end, God intended it for good. He intended it for his protection. And sometimes things happen to us in our lives that we really don't understand. We really just feel, why is this happening to me? We had one of those experiences when Carly was born. I got a stomach bug at 35 weeks pregnant and I went into premature labor. And to us, it felt like a disaster. We did everything in our power to prevent this birth from happening prematurely, but we couldn't stop the labor. In the end, Carlo had to be born and he came early. And when he was born with an emergency C-section, his umbilical cord was so tightly wrapped around his neck that it was strangling him. And when the doctor pulled the umbilical cord from his neck, he actually, his little head whiplashed because it was so tightly bound around his neck. And in that moment, we just realized we were so thankful, even though we thought it was a disaster and it was a painful experience and premature birth is not supposed to happen. We just had an aha moment of God's grace and how he was protecting little Carly and us in that moment. And we don't always get the answers. Sometimes we experience stuff that we don't understand. And someday in heaven, we will only see wow, this is what I was protected from. But when you do get the answer in this life, it will fill you with awe and wonder because you will realize that God is so much bigger than we can understand. Then the second thing that the Bible says that the purpose of pain is good for is our compassion towards others. Just think about it. If you went some, through something bad or struggling um, with some experience like a drug addiction 
and you went through that painful experience and out on the other side. You have so much more compassion with somebody that is struggling with that. The Bible says, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. Because we get comfort from God, we have the capacity to comfort others. Our patient endurance. Now, the word that, that Paul actually uses for patient endurance in the scripture is hupomane. Now, hupomane means it's actually being under a load. It's like an athlete that's picking up a heavy weight and choosing to remain under it. Now, all of us recently watched the Olympics and then there was this funny meme on, that circulated on Facebook, a guy named Alex Bayes who said, I like to watch the Olympics and guess how far into each event I would die. <laughs> now, obviously this looks to us, especially the gymnasts, it looks to us like the most impossible thing. But through patient endurance and dedication, getting up at four o'clock in the morning and exercising and training until they got it right, they actually received this reward. And that is what Paul is talking about here. It's this patient endurance that makes you stronger, that makes you fit. And God wants us to learn that patient endurance. Intimacy and dependence with God. When we run to God with our pain, we experience intimacy. We experience that special moment with God that we will never experience in any other moment in our lives just because we're just so dependent and reliant on God. I remember Renee, one of our pastor's wives said, she actually misses the time when she struggled to get pregnant, not because she still wants to struggle to get pregnant, but because she misses that intimate moments that she had with Jesus, begging him for a pregnancy and falling down at his feet. And so in that moment, when you choose to run to God with your pain and rely on him for grace and strength for each day, you grow in intimacy and you have such special moments with your Savior. Then it also works to the good for our testimony to give others hope. If you went through a painful experience and God took you through this valley and out on the other side and you encounter somebody that's still in that valley, you can camp there with them and tell your story so that they can also get hope in the God of comfort. And then lastly, for our maturity and our sanctification. Now, when Christ died for us on the cross, he died for our sin and he rose from the dead. And when God now looks at us, he sees us as blameless and spotless. He sees Jesus. That is our current status, is that we are blameless and holy and set apart. But if we are all, all honest with one another, our current reality is not necessarily that. But through, as we mature through painful experiences and we grow and we learn, it's like an onion layer that peels off and another onion layer that peels off. And as they keep on peeling off and we mature, our current status and our current reality becomes closer to each other. Also, I want to ask you, if you take, for instance, Matt and Wesley, two people, two leaders in our church, and you decide you need a general to go to war with, and Matt has never experienced any hardship in his life. He thinks he's invincible. He is arrogant, he is boastful, he has never lost and he has never failed. And then on the other hand, you get Wesley who has faced hardship. He's humble, he has grown and he has learned and he has matured. He's a servant leader and he knows where his strength comes from. Which one of those people would you want as your general when you go into war. You see, the thing about pain is not that it will make us stop believing in God. The danger of pain is that it will make us start believing terrible things about God. 
And that is what the devil wants. The voice of the accuser comes and speaks into our lives and wants to keep on accusing God with us so that we start believing terrible things about him. So let me introduce you to the God of all comfort. We recently had Carlo's sixth birthday. Little Carlo that was born prematurely turned six years old. And it was at Grootfontein Mountain Bike Park. Now imagine 10 six-year-old boys on mountain bikes. Spells disaster. So I had my first aid kit there. And obviously there were several wipeouts and several knees with roasties. And there were lots of variables that played into this mountain biking. Their ability to steer the bike, their freedom of choice. They would be able to choose where to go and sometimes make mistakes. And then also the other children colliding into one another. But in all of those variables, variables there was one constant. And that was Retief, standing right there next to the mountain bike track, looking out over Garli. And you would say, how could Retief not prevent Carly from getting hurt? But the thing is, if Retief was really supposed to prevent any painful experience to little Carly, he would have had to be a helicopter parent, literally running with Carly and preventing Carly from doing anything and said, Carly, don't do this. Carly, be careful. Carly, don't go down here. What would Carly tell him? I'd say, Dad, just let me live my life. Just allow me to learn and do this. I can do this. And that is exactly what God does. He wants us to experience freedom of choice. He wants us to be fully alive and live our lives. But you know what is also so beautiful? The moment when Carly did get hurt and he did have a fall, Retief came running. And that is exactly what our Heavenly Father does. He comes running into our pain, into our hurt, to comfort us, to love us, and to heal us. I believe we have a loving Father who allows us to live, allows us to make choices. But when we get hurt, He brings His love to transform us from the inside out. Let's look at what the scripture says about God in our pain. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. Verse 9. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely, not rely on ourselves, but on the God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. So what does the scripture say about God? He is the God of all comfort, not just some comfort, not just certain experiences of pain, not just a broken finger or a bumped toe, but painful experiences that bombs our pain gate open. He is the God of all of that, all comfort. He brings comfort into all of that pain with his heart of love and his heart of healing. He's merciful. He gives us grace for every single day. He empowers us with his grace and his mercy to keep on keeping on, even though we sometimes feel we can't do this anymore. He will be there and He will arrive and He will give us grace for every single step that we need to take forward. He understands pain and suffering. Christ suffered when He died for us on the cross. He was hurt. He was 
They drove nails through his hands and feet. Before that, they hit him 40 times. The blood dripped from his body. His flesh was torn. He knows what pain feels like. He's not a stranger to pain. And in that moment, he comes into your pain with his comfort and says, I know, I get it, but I am here. I am with you and I will deliver you. We will get through this. He comes alongside you in your valley and he reaches out his hand and says, come walk with me through this. He raises the dead. Maybe at the moment you feel emotionally and spiritually numb. You feel dead. And God just comes into this moment and he wants to come and tell you today, I am the God who breathes life into any situation that feels like you are dead. I want to come and breathe life into you today. He's the God that delivers us. He's the God that is with us. And as we have journeyed through the gate of pain and the gift of pain and the God of all comfort, maybe today you sit here and you ask, but how? How do I do this? How do I get rid of this all-consuming pain that feel like it's going to crush me? Where do I start? Start by acknowledging your pain and that you need help. And then run to the God of all comfort with your pain. Run towards him, not away from him. Don't set up camp or build a house in your valley. But accept his invitation to start walking with him through the valley and through that pain and start healing from your pain and walk with him out on the other side. Talk about it with qualified professionals. We have a wholeness counseling ministry in our church. Make an appointment, start talking about it so that you can start healing from it. Forgive, set free and let go of your pain. Even if you feel like you need to forgive God today. Tell God that is how you feel. Run towards him with that and say, God, this is how I feel. He will not be offended. He is a faithful God. He is a loving father. You can be real with him. But don't hold on to that offense that you have taken with him or with other people. Lay down at his feet. And open up your heart for him to start healing you with his love and his comfort. And when you have caused pain and you're sitting here today and you realize you are maybe on the other side. Where you have caused pain to somebody. I want to encourage you to go to them today and to apologize. Say sorry and ask for their forgiveness. To allow God to start facilitating a healing response in and through you. But as we close off, I also want to encourage you with this verse from Revelations. When I was recently at the Hand Therapy and Hand Surgery Congress, I sat next to a colleague of mine who is a pain specialist. And she says, a lot of people that come to her just say, if I can just get through this painful experience, through this pain, then I will be okay. You know, it is the most amazing promise for people that are in relationship with God, for believers, is that although we experience pain in this life, and this life is not without its suffering, and in this world, you will have troubles, God says, Fear not, I have overcome this world. And one day, as you keep on running to God with your pain and stay in relationship with him and keep your eyes on him to save you, there will come a day when we will be with him in heaven where revelations promise he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, 
no crying, no pain anymore. For, for the former things have passed away. May I encourage you today to keep on running towards God and not away from Him. Let's just close our eyes and in this moment, may you just acknowledge that you got it and acknowledge that you need help, that you cannot rely on yourself to get through this and call out in this moment to the God of all comfort who is coming running to save you, to love you and to heal you. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for coming to reveal your heart of love to us today. We just run to you in this moment as you come running to us. And we honor you just for who you are. We just bring all our pain, all our suffering, all our afflictions, all our heartaches to you in this moment. And we come and leave it at your feet. And we open up our hearts for you to just pour your love and your healing into us. Lord, and thank you that we can forgive. We choose today to set free, to release and let go of all of that pain that we are holding on to so tightly because it has even started to identify us. And we just want to come and, and hear what you say about us, that we are free, that we are set apart, that we are loved, and that you want us to fulfill a purpose again and be in relationship with you. And may you injure this moment, just come and speak your healing and breathe new life into every heart that feels numb and dead in this moment. Thank you, God, that you are the giver of life and the God of hope and the God of all comfort. Amen. Wow, thank you so much, Isabella, for sharing that word. Um, just that final thought, are you running towards God with your pain or away from Him? And I know we've all faced pain in our lives and myself as well. And I really know that the Lord is inviting us to come to Him with our pain. Well, I want to invite you and encourage you, reach out to us. We don't have all the answers, but, um, but we don't mind walking this journey with you. As we trust with you that God will comfort you and bring healing to your heart if there's any pain. With that being said, we hope to see you next time. Thank you for joining us here this morning and taking the time to listen to what we have to share.